Maybe you can relate to two disciples of Jesus. I know I can. After the crucifixion of Jesus, he had told his disciples many, many times, on the third day, I'm going to resurrect. Just like the scripture tells us today that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes, right? We have promises from God. The Bible says he's ha he has his eye on the sparrow. If he takes care of them, he's going to take care of us. So we have promises of God. They had a promise of God. He said, I'm going to be crucified, but I'm going to resurrect on the third day. But after the crucifixion, these two disciples that I'm going to be speaking about, they lost all hope. Even though he told them, on the third day, I'm going to resurrect, they lost all hope. And then this is an amazing thing too. After Jesus resurrected, he appeared to some of the disciples and to Mary, right? They found out that Jesus resurrected. They found out that he appeared to some of the other disciples. But do you know what they did? They still chose not to believe the good news. They still chose to walk in doubt, in hopelessness, in desperation. That's why I was asking you, maybe you can relate to these two disciples. Even though we hear the preachings, even though we hear the word of God, even though we know the promises of God, we still choose to not believe. And we still choose to, rather than having faith, we choose to walk in unbelief, in hopelessness, and in desperation. Now, when you choose these things, has God abandoned you? Is God mad at you? Man, I want to show you a side of Jesus that a lot of people don't know. God is very gentle. Did you know that? When he descended on Jesus after Jesus was baptized, how did he appear? Like a lion? Like a, like a gorilla? Like an ox? Like a bull? How did he descend on Jesus when Jesus was baptized? He appeared as a dove. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit appeared as a dove. Something that a lot of people don't know about Jesus is that yes, he's the lion. Yes, he's strong like an ox. That's one of the pictures of Jesus in the Old Testament because he carried our sins. But he's also gentle like a dove. Did you know that? He's gentle like a dove. And when you're walking in your unbelief, he's not going to go and shake you. He's not going to go and slap you. He's going to be gentle with you. And while he's being gentle with you, open your heart. Don't just shut yourself down. Look what happens to these two disciples. They're on a road called Emmaus. And just so that we can continue to uh, be understanding of this video, the road Emmaus in the Hebrew means obscure. So they were walking an obscure road. And check this out. It was seven miles away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem in the Hebrew means the city of peace. So they were walking towards the city of peace, seven miles? No, they were walking away from the city of peace. They were literally a picture of a Christian who's backsliding. Instead of walking towards Jesus, they were walking away from Jesus. It's literally a picture of a backslider. Backsliding always starts in the heart first. It always starts in the heart first. Before you see people that are full-blown back in the world, it started here in the heart first. They started backsliding in their heart. And look at Jesus. Look how gentle he is. So you're choosing the wrong road. You might be living wrong. You might be doing wrong. You might be going wrong places. You might be living a wrong lifestyle. Has God forgot about you? Has God abandoned you? I don't want to let you know this. He has not. He's being gentle with you right now. But don't ignore his gentle voice. He's trying to bring you back. Don't ignore his gentle voice. Don't reject him. Look what happens here. Luke chapter 24, verse 13 through 20, 35. Pay attention. That very day, what very day? The day of the resurrection. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus. These are the two disciples that were backsliding. Instead of choosing to believe, they chose to have doubt. About seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. The crucifixion. And about the people saying that they saw the resurrected Jesus. While they were talking and discussing together... Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But this is the amazing thing. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still and looked sad. Jesus knew what they were talking about. They were walking away from Jerusalem. They were going towards Emmaus, which means obscurity. They were leaving the promises of God. They were going to their backfilling in life. 
and Jesus appeared to them on that road. How does this minister to me today? This ministers to me in the way that when we're walking backwards in our Christian life, God will still appear to us. God will still walk with us. God will still be gentle and speak with us. God isn't just with us when we're doing everything correct. God is also with us even when we're doing wrong, when we're backsliding, when we're not having faith. He's there, but he's not there because he's approving. He's there because he's trying to reach us back. He's trying to speak hope into us. You know, one of the things that a lot of people get misunderstood is when Jesus would hang around the sinners and the drunks, and when Jesus would hang around the people that were, you know, sinners in the nation of Jerusalem back in those, in the nation of Israel back in those days, people said, oh, he's a friend of sinners. And today people misunderstand that and they say, well, would Jesus hang around them? Jesus was chilling with them. No, 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 no. When Jesus hung around the sinners, it's not because he was condoning and it's not because he was allowing them to live in that sin and he was just chilling with them, partying with them. No. When Jesus hung around sinners, it's because they, the sinners, were hearing him. And they, the sinners, wanted what he had, and he was giving them what he had. He was reaching out to them because he said this, who are the ones that need a doctor? It is it the healthy or is it the sick? He said, it's the sick. So when sick people go to the hospital, the doctor doesn't say, make me sick. The doctor brings them in to try to make them better, to try to heal them. Same thing with Jesus. When he was hanging around the sinners, it's not because he was approving or condoning their lifestyle. It's because he was giving them, the sinners, what he had, forgiveness, salvation, change of life. That's what was going on. So look at this. They're backsliding, these two disciples, they're backsliding in their heart, of course. They're losing hope. They're walking in doubt. They're walking in desperation. And Jesus appears to them. But this is the amazing thing. He disguises himself. They don't know that that's Jesus. And look at why he does that. We're going to find out. Look what scripture continues to say. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have been happening there in these days? And Jesus says, what are y'all talking about? And they're looking all sad. And then they tell him, don't you know what's happening? Don't you know what's going on? Now, this is amazing because this is exactly what we do. This is exactly how we respond to the Lord many, many times. God knows exactly what we're going through. He knows exactly your situation. He knows your struggle. He knows your battles. He knows your flaws. He knows your faults. He knows everything about you and about me. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will ask us a rhetorical question and then we'll answer God the same way. God, don't you see everything that I'm going through, God? Don't you see the sufferings of my life? Don't you see everything that I'm passing through, Lord? Don't you see the pain, the sorrow? Don't you see the desperation, the hopelessness? I know that I've done that before. I know that I've asked God questions like that. Well, that's what they were doing. Are you the only one that doesn't know what's going on? And look at Jesus. Look what he says. And he said to them, what things? What's going on? You know, the Holy Spirit will have a conversation with you. And then sometimes you'll be contemplating in your own mind. Man, God, don't you see this? Don't you see that? Don't you see what I'm going through? And then the Lord will begin to remind you of his word and what his word says. And look what Jesus tells these people. What things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty indeed and in word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and the rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of an angel who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. And he said to them, you know what happened? Jesus asked them what things, and they begin to tell him. And then they begin to testify to themselves. Do you know that you can testify to yourself? Did you know that? When you... When you uh, elaborate or you repeat the preachings that you hear or the scriptures that you read and you speak them again, when you repeat them, do you know that you're ministering to yourself? So Jesus asked these disciples, what things, what's going on? Oh man, Jesus was crucified. We thought he was going to be the savior of the world and of Jerusalem, but then he was crucified. And then some women that were with our group said that they saw an angel and the angel said that he had resurrected. And then some of the disciples ran to the tomb and they found it just as, as they had said. They're preaching to themselves that he has resurrected. It's the third day. And they're preaching to themselves that the tomb is empty. But even though they know the tomb is empty, the two disciples, even though there's many witnesses that say the angels told them that he had resurrected, they still don't believe. 
Now, this is what I want to ask you. And this is the question that, not even a question, this is the statement that Jesus tells them. And this is the statement that I know many times I can fall under. And maybe you can fall under this statement today. Look what Jesus tells them. And do me a favor before we continue to read. If you're not subscribed, do me a favor and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. But let's go to this statement. Look at the statement that Jesus tells them. And I know that I can fall under this statement many times. And this is why we need to be humble and submit to the Lord. Look what he said. And he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. He begins to rebuke them. He said, man, you're acting like fools and your hearts are slow to believe the word of God. He said, you're acting like a fool and you're not believing the word of God. And I, I can imagine they're shocked, right? And then look what he says. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses, meaning the book of Genesis, that's what's called Moses, the first five books of the Bible, they call it the Pentateuch. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Do you know that the Old Testament preaches about Jesus? You might say, I've never read about Jesus in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is Christ concealed. The New Testament is Christ revealed. He begins to preach to them from the Old Testament everything that was speaking about the Christ. In other words, he begins to give them revelation, something that was always there, but now it's plainly seen. He begins to preach to them and speak to them and minister to them. I'm telling you, there's power in the word of God. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted, this is Jesus, look how God's going to act sometimes in your life. He acted as if he was going further, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us for it is toward evening and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. You know, sometimes God's going to act like he's going another direction. Sometimes the presence of God's going to act like it's not around you, but the Lord just wants you to invite him. Did you know that? Did you know that God just wants you to invite him? Because God doesn't want to be anywhere where he's not welcomed. Scripture says in the book of Revelation, I stand at the door and I knock, waiting for someone to open. He's not going to enter a place where he's not welcome. He's not going to enter a place where he's not invited. So he was acting like, as if he was walking further. The disciples, this was their fork in the road. In, in other words, were they going to continue in their unbelief or the words that he was speaking to them? Were they going to want to hear more? And they wanted to hear more. That's the good news. They wanted to hear more. And they said, no, 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 stay with us. Stay here in our house. And he stayed. And look what happens. And when he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed it, meaning he prayed for it, and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open when he broke the bread and gave them the bread. Their eyes were open, and let's find out why this is a revelation. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him. They saw that it was Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. Can you imagine that? They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened up to us the scriptures? What will make your heart come alive? The scriptures, the word of God, when we read them, scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It says, and they arose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. They stopped their backsliding. They left that backsliding, that backsliding place, that, that backslidden road. They left it and they walked back to Jerusalem. And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the 11 and those who were going with them. And they said, the Lord has indeed risen and he has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road and he and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. It's amazing. When he broke the bread... And he handed it to them and they grabbed the bread. Their eyes were open. Do you know what this tells me? And do you know what I want to tell you? Many times in our confusions, in our doubts, in our sorrows, in our hopelessness, we're doubting God just like these men. And we're saying, God, don't you see what's going on? Don't you see what I'm going through? And many times all we need to do is just have some fellowship with God. That's all we need to do, have fellowship with God. When we start having fellowship with God, he will begin to break the bread with us. What does the bread represent? His word, his word. When you begin to read the word of God or pray and you begin to meditate on the word of God, the Holy Spirit will begin to remind you what the word says. In your sorrows, the Holy Spirit will begin to remind you that he is near the brokenhearted. In your sorrows, the Holy Spirit will begin to remind you sorrow only lasts for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The Holy Spirit will begin to remind you a broken heart leads to a happy face in other words when we're going through pain when we're going through sorrow there is a blessing coming there is better days coming there is joy coming when we're going through financial situations we begin to remember when jesus told the 12 disciples when they were doubting about the food and when they were doubting about bread he told them don't you remember 
how out of just a couple of fishes and out of a couple of loaves, I fed 4,000 people, I fed 5,000 people. Why are you worrying about those things? We begin to remember that God can bless us. We begin to remember what King David said. I was young and I am old, but one thing I've never seen, I've never seen the king's children forsaken. I've never seen them begging for bread. In other words, God will always supply all of your needs. Scripture says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Everything else will be handed over to you. In our times of fear, in our times of anguish, in our times of hopelessness, we know that scripture says, in this world you will have sorrow, but fear not, for I am with you, and I have already overcome the world. And scripture tells us that Jesus said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Even if you're fallen, even if you're in a sin, we remember what scripture says. It says that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you have fellowship with God, he begins to break the bread with you. When you read the scripture, he begins to break the bread with you. And what happened when the bread was broken and the bread was handed over to them? Their eyes were open and they left that place of Emmaus. They left that obscure place and they walked back to Jerusalem, which means the city of peace. In other words, you're going to leave that place of brokenness, of sadness. You're going to leave that place of hopelessness and you're going to walk back to that place of faith that place of believing, that place of trusting God, that place of not standing in the mud, that place of standing on the solid foundation, which is Jesus Christ. So have you chosen the wrong road? Do you feel like you're in the road of Emmaus? I want to let you know that Jesus is there with you and he wants to break bread. And he's going to act like he's going to keep going somewhere, but he wants you to invite him into your life. Tell him, Lord, stay with me. Lord, yes, I'm going through these doubts. I'm going through these struggles, but that doesn't mean I don't trust in you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Stay here with me, Lord. Minister to me, Father God. Break bread with me, Lord, and begin to pray and begin to read scripture or begin to hear a preaching. And God will begin to break bread with you. And when he hands it to you, your eyes will be open. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I hope this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this video or for this channel, you can do so by one of two ways. The first way is something like this. It's called Super Thanks. It's a feature at the bottom of your screen. Those are always a great blessing to my life. Those are always greatly appreciated. Those are a one-time way that you can show your appreciation to my videos or to my channel. But if you want to show your appreciation on a monthly basis, you can do so by something that looks like this. It's the link in my description. It's called Channel Memberships. Channel Memberships is a monthly way that you can show your appreciation for my channel or for my videos. It's $5. It's about $1.25 a week. That's always a great blessing to my life. Thank you so much. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos. I hope that they will continue to encourage and bless your life. God bless you.